Hello. Welcome to my other show. My name is Susan Rushton, and this is the show on which I'm privileged to, I'm delighted to, I get to, I'm thrilled to, what else? I'm honored, I'm honored to uh, talk to re representatives of one of my favorite Auburn organizations, the Auburn Symphony. Constantine, welcome back. Thank you, Susan. And how many times has this been? This is fifth time. The, the fifth time that you've been a soloist with the yes. Auburn Symphony. Well, I'm thrilled that you'll be that you're coming back and that you are here and you will be pay, playing at the Mondavi on May 11th, 2014. And as we speak, that is this Sunday. This is the kind of thing that the Auburn Symphony makes available, presents. And what this, and by when I say the kind of thing, I mean, of course, you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's a nice addition. I should tweet it. A kind of thing. <laughs> you're a, you're, yeah, the, you're the kind it. of thing that the symphony presents. Now, you, how long have you been playing piano? Since I'm three years old or okay. so. Yeah. Why? Um, I think I didn't want to be a painter, which is what my whole family is. Okay. And when I was born, I have a younger sister who really had no choice. She's a wonderful painter <laughs> and now. But my parents wanted, you know, I was first born, so they were like, oh, of course he's going to be a painter. So they were, you know, starting me on painting and on music at the same time because everyone's very musical in my family. So, but you rebelled. But I knew they're that the, unless I really painters. commit myself to the piano, they're going to make me into a painter. And I adore visual arts. I just don't feel that I am a painter. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a painter of a different kind, you know, with sounds and yes, things. Yes, yes. But, but I, I loved the piano, so I sort of went in that direction. And you live in, and now you live in New York, For right? the last 15 years. Okay. And, but, and you came to, came from Russia to New York? To New York, into my freshman year at Juilliard. Juilliard, okay. Technically speaking, I came physically from Russia to Santa Barbara, California, uh -huh to be at Music Academy of the West the summer of 99, which was the summer before my freshman year. And then I came to New York. And I guess the, the, the school in Santa Barbara suffers because it's not Juilliard. <laughs> but the school well, in it's Santa summer Barbara school. Is, is, also a, is also a big deal. It's a, it is a big deal. Yeah. It's, it's a fantastic summer program uh, for all musicians. They have a full orchestra. They have a full opera. And they only have 12 pianists. And um, I was lucky enough to be one of the 12. And uh -huh. my teacher, Jerome Lowenthal, at Juilliard, has been teaching there for, you know, 45 years, 50 years, I think, by now. So um, it was a perfect sort of way to spend a summer and get to really know mm -hmm. him before we started Juilliard. So technically, the first state I came to from Russia was California. Oh, good. <laughs> so, you, so you're returning. Yeah, uh, I feel yeah. like I'm home. Yeah, good. Um, so you, you started on piano when you were three and apparently fell in love with it. Yes, wow. I mean, I... I uh, what is there about the piano? Well, the, you know, in French it's called royal, which is the royal, which is sort of like the, I suppose, the Lion King of the instruments, because piano is the only instrument that can impersonate other sounds. You know, oboe sounds like an oboe, French horn sounds like a French horn, violin sounds like violin. Now, piano, if you play it correctly, can sound like violin, it can sound mm. like an oboe, it can sound like a human voice. Okay. So you can visualize and do things to the sound that make it into a chameleon. Also, um, you know, you get to sit doing it, you don't have to stand, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be in an uncomfortable position or whatever, I mean, I'm joking, but, um, <laughs> but it, it, it just kind of was a natural fit, I suppose. It's hard to remember how I started, and naturally, what I know for sure is no child wants to practice eight hours a day, which is what sometimes I was made to do, mm -hmm. you know, but you have to, so my parents were never like stage parents, but they were... They're very dedicated to their art, so they were like, "Well, if you're going to do this, you have, have to, to do, do it, it. well." Yeah. So, yeah. and to do it well, you have to practice. Yeah, you hear me? You really have practice. to clock on the hours. Yeah, yeah. Well, I always say it's like airline pilot. You know, you're not allowed to fly a jet unless you've done 200 hours or <laughs> 200,000 hours, whatever. And the same goes with piano playing. You know, you really can't play professionally unless you've crossed a threshold of I don't know how many thousands of hours. They say actually that's 10,000 hours. I don't know. I haven't timed it. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you have, 
as of today, you've been in, in California. Uh, it's the third day, third I think, day, of this And trip. you were playing the Rock 2. Um, I came from Miami, where I was playing Rachmaninoff Second, which is what I'm playing this yeah. coming Sunday at Mondavi with yeah. the Opera and Symphony. Um, I was playing it the, the last Sunday, the May the 4th. Um, in Miami with Miami Symphony Orchestra, as I say, tis the seasons to end seasons. Yes. It's the closing of the symphony okay. season. And, you know, what a better piece to send everybody off to their summer than the romantic and ravishing Rachmaninoff II. So what's so, uh, and I'm devil's advocate, I know I've heard you play this play this fabulous piece, but what is, what's the, what's the big deal about Rachmaninoff's Second piano concerto. Well, you know, it's it's hard to pinpoint. I can only express sort of what I feel about it. But I think majority of people would agree with me that it just has the right combination of intimacy and passion, of uh, you know the personal take on life and the extrovert sort of explosiveness of the outsized persona, and it just it's it's romantic. I mean, it's romantic at its absolute utmost uh, way of expressing musical thought. It's um, no wonder it's been used in film so much. Mm. You know, Brief Encounter, a marvelous 1940-something yeah. uh, drama about two people having an affair at yeah. a train station. Yeah. The soundtrack is exclusively Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that moment of the climax, I can just see the picture of her running, you know, after the departing train and yeah. the love of her yeah. life yeah. she will never see again. And, you know, that's, it's just there and people have connected to it for half a century. Yes, okay. So, um, so do you play any other Rachmaninoff? Can yeah, actually I play the four, one, two, three, four. Uh -huh. And there's, there's this movie. Oh, the, the uh, shine. shine. The, it's about Rock Mine of Third. third yeah. Of well, I always say, you know, I actually, crazy. yeah, I didn't watch that movie on purpose because I did not want to see how a pianist loses their mind mm -hmm. and goes pretty nuts <laughs> over playing that piece. Because you know, there are psychological tricks that can plant an idea in your mind that this is a okay. piece to, you know, end you. Um, and I try to stay away from these things, not to allow myself, not to give myself license yes. to freak out okay. unnecessarily. Uh, I know Jeffrey Rush won an Oscar for it. I know it's a good movie. It popularizes music, so great. It's a good thing. That's but I just don't want to watch someone right. go crazy playing the piece. I happen to play a lot. Yeah. I play a lot yeah. of Rachmaninoff III. Last year was like Rachmaninoff third year. I played it a number of times. And... Um, I mean, it's difficult, but it's I. It's not that diff. I mean, it's not more difficult than Rachmaninoff Second. <laughs> it's not more difficult than some other pieces. Um, so I. Um, you just have to practice more. You have to practice yeah. a lot, yeah. you know. Anyway, <laughs> yes. but um, but I don't think it's the kind of piece that really should uh, drive you insane. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Good. So, you. Um, I I, I want to know what makes a good piano player. Oh my God! I wish I knew. <laughs> I think I think well, what makes you a good. You do know. You do know. You because you're a good piano player. Well, you know, it all starts with practicing. Um, then they say, you know, it's sixty percent talent and forty percent practice, or whatever the combination is. You, I mean, you have to have an innate musicianship. You have to you have to want to learn more. I mean, what I come to uh, with time is that it's the extra musical things, it's the things outside of the practice rooms that I do that make me better. Um, you have to live. We are interpreting human condition as musicians. Um, we are telling the story. That's what this is really all about, is telling the story and connecting to people emotionally. You can't do it if you're emotionally disconnected um, mm. to the world. Okay. And so um, you can't sort of be a recluse and than relate to people, because that's unrelatable. Everybody, at the end of the day, wants to be loved and to love in return, right, as the song goes. Sure. And that's what music is all about. And so having life is very important, not being fixated on just the perfection. And not being a snob. Not being a snob, uh, definitely. I mean, it's good to be a bit of a culture snob, I suppose. Okay. You have to be selective. Yes. But you can't say, oh, I don't do that, or I don't do this. You know, that's just... That's silly. Yeah. But in any profession, that's, I mean, it's just a bad way to be, I would imagine, depriving yourself. But, um, you know, read, listen to other musicians, listen to other styles. I get so much 
inspiration from opera, from vocal music, from certain popular genres. You know, Rachmaninoff, for instance, uh, was deeply religious, and you know, he wrote a lot of liturgies and masses. Um, and going to say a Russian Orthodox service, even if you're not, just to hear the sound will inform your interpretation in a oh, way that Rachmaninoff. no practice okay. room or or book you or know where he's coming from. you know because yeah. that was him. It was so important to him that when you read his letters, in fact, he was mainly communicating with Russian priests, asking them advice as to how to compose, you know, Kyrie, whatever, in ah. Russian mass. Uh, so this was really on his mind at all times. Uh -huh. And you find a lot of sort of um, hidden church cadences in his music, and especially in the second piano concerto. Wow. It doesn't come to mind right away, no. but when you know, when you've heard the, the sound, you recognize it, it. It's an illusion. Yeah, it's uh, in your system. If, if it works, yeah. great. If it doesn't work, that makes that that doesn't hurt it. Yeah. That's well, you wonderful. know, they say knowledge is power. You can never know too much. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I want to move from piano music to the music of your um, of your jacket. Oh, thank now you. this is your design. No, as oh. a matter of fact, this Shoot. is very. I that's a perfect was. plug. No, <laughs> this is um, this is actually a design of the most talented star designer in New York, Madeleine Gruen, and I borrowed it from her. Uh, I borrowed it from her to wear for the Rachmaninoff Second. So you're not worried about groupies coming and, and grabbing Well, it actually, I will be. Yes, I, I might have to have a bodyguard making sure nobody rips it off. But it's, um, it's you know, she's a fantastic designer. She uh, has tr now went out on her own. She works with Tom Hilfiger and Jean-Paul Gaultier. And, uh, and she just does this amazing stuff for guys. You know, menswear is yes. her strong yeah. suit. Um, and uh, I was very lucky this wasn't busy for a photo shoot because usually it's lended out to photo shoots mm -hmm. and things. And I said, you know, could I possibly mm -hmm. have it? She said, sure. Yeah. It's available. Good. So Good. Madeline Gruen rocks. Oh, cool. So you, but you also design some of your uh, Yeah, clothes? I design shoes. shoes. I design shoes that I, I'm not wearing my design okay. now. I will okay. be wearing it as a surprise for people. So come to Mandavi Center on <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> Watch my shoes. Uh, they're encrusted with Swarovski crystals. Very comfortable. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, very comfortable, but they're very sparkly. Ah. And, um, and I'm also going to create a jewelry piece with a, another designer friend of mine, Valentina Kova, in New York, that's going to be probably an earring set. For for yourself. For her label, this is going to be ah. Constantine for Valentina Coa. Ah, okay. So you you are a m musician and with with music and clothes. Well, you know, I always loved fashion. fashion. Uh -huh. I think what we wear is an expression of our inner selves. I mean, there are days that I just wear a t-shirt and okay. jeans and yeah. not expressing anything really. But you know, when you dress up even a little bit, when you go someplace special, what what we choose to wear is somehow reflective of our personality, one way or the other, or our mood. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it always fascinated me. I loved it always. And um, secretly, I sort of always wanted to you know, design some fashion, but you can do everything in life. And um, so you've just decided to be a great pianist. I, well, I decided to <laughs> stick that, with that, what that. I'm already okay at, and uh, and waiting for an opportunity to actually design or co-design something when it arrives. And I think the collaboration with Valentina will be just that. Yes. So when you are in New York, are you performing? Are you teaching? Are you you're, you're designing? Yes to all? Um, yes to most, or, yes. Or is, I teach a little bit privately. Sort of a, a, a hub for you? Well, it's kind of a hub because I'm on the road about six months out of the year. Oh. So when I'm in New York, I'm practicing, I'm designing, I'm teaching somewhat, but more in a curatorial private way, you know, because I can't commit to a six days a week schedule. And um, I also have a reality show, The Real Pianist of the Hamptons which is online, so you can Google The Real Pianist of the Hamptons. The and Real Pianist of the Hamptons. Of the Hamptons. Hamptons. The Real Pianists of the Hamptons. Plural. Plural. Real it's Pianists of the Hamptons. Yeah, like The Real Housewives of New York. <laughs> okay. And it's, it's shot in the Hamptons at Piano Fest in the Hamptons, which is a venerable summer school uh, for pianists only that's been around for 26 years. And I'm an alumni of that. So uh, when 
Paul Shanley, the American pianist and extraordinary teacher who runs the whole thing, who invented it 26 years ago, uh, when he asked me if I would like to be involved, I said, yes, of course, I really see it as a reality show. And so we went ahead with it. And um, it's on the web. You can YouTube it. It's a lot That's of fun because cool. it's a house in the Hamptons where 12 young college level, you know, brilliant musicians are living together, eating together, interacting. So it's sort of like a perfect reality setup. Yes. Now, those of us who have spent all our lives in Placer County, uh, I, I, need, I, I know something about the Hamptons. One of the things I know is that the traffic getting there is terrible. It's sort of like Sacramento <laughs> yeah. traffic. It's bumper to bumper. Yeah. But it's, it's a posh, plush, elegant place with gigantic houses. Well, you're just about right. Yeah. I mean, it's, I would say it's American Monte Carlo. Okay. It sounds there good, go. doesn't it? There yeah. You go. <laughs> it's it's really it's it's you know sort of it's it's perfect place. It's a paradise. It's it's a little bit unreal because it's you know so extraordinary and fine and of course you know that's one percent. Yes. Um, but we're lucky to be there. What do you listen for in a good piano piece? I always listen to engagement. It has to move me. That's probably the most important thing. And then then it has to be personalized and yet uh, style appropriate. There has to be an understanding of what kind of music it is that you're playing and which can be interpreted so many ways. So there's a lot of leeway but you have to know the historical context and the style. So if you're playing you know Mozart or Bach you can't phrase or pedal the same way that you would playing Rachmaninoff and vice versa. So there has to be an understanding of what you're doing but most importantly you know, there is no shortcut to greatness. There is no sort of one perfect recipe um, to Shoot. a great performance. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's like diet pills. You know, really, you won't lose weight by eating it. And, and likewise, you know, you, you can be great if you just practice eight hours a day yeah. or do this or do that. It's um, at the end of the day, you have to use the technique and the knowledge as a service to telling the story and to connecting emotionally to the music and to the audience that's listening to you. Yes. And in my opinion, in my memory, you have done that beautifully. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, the, I have seen you play on stage. I have seen you play for a small group of people, relatively small. And each time, it's as if you are a good writer paying attention, close attention to your listener in it, as a writer does to his or her reader and letting the music tell rather than look how great I am. Even though you have this fabulous, <laughs> these sparkly shoes yeah. and this sparkly jacket. Of course, you're, you're a performer as, as well um, and you have to attract attention to yourself. but. When you attract yourself, peop attention to yourself, you are attracting, your point is to attract people's attention to the music. Well, you're, you're right. I mean, I think it's a, the, another important thing about just being a performer is you have to be authentic. You have to be true to yourself. When people try to manufacture their personality, um, I can sense it. I can see it also as a professional. I can just see it. It's potable. And I don't think it works. So first, the hardest thing is to kind of find yourself. I'm speaking such cliches. Oh my God, they're probably <laughs> oh, throwing well. tomatoes at the screen. <laughs> um, you know, it's really, uh, you have to figure out who you are. And then you just have to be true to yourself. That's the, the, the starting point. And, you know, I, I love fashion. I like these kinds of clothes. I, I wouldn't be me wearing, you know, a gray suit and a black tie. Uh -huh. um, and at the same time, I hope that when I play, people eventually stop noticing the sparkle and mm -hmm. they really tune into music because this is what it's about. Yes. But that is on me to deliver the performance that will override the Swarovski crystal. Yes. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Which is a challenge, but you know, it's nice to be challenged. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and some people say, oh my God, you know, I just had to close my eyes to stop looking at your shoes. I was like, well, then close Okay, them. close them. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen. That's your job. Yeah. Uh, Constantine, um, you, I have received information about uh, Music in the Mountains yes. for this summer, and, it, and I, your name popped out as the resident pianist 
for the summer for this organization. What does that mean, a resident pianist? Well, that means that I will reside there for seven days and perform with the group, with everybody, all the musicians who are there, the orchestra, and we do chamber music and do some master classes. I'm super excited about it because I have so many friends uh, here in the area uh -huh. among the Auburn Symphony members who are you know, in the same community with performers who will be in Music in the Mountains. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's sort of the same gang, I yeah. imagine. So it, it is just a wonderful opportunity to, to be back um, and play some more different music uh -huh. and uh, be in this beautiful part of the country and see my friends and make Good. new friends. Yes, wonderful. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. And before we started taping, you mentioned Fortissimo. S uh, four of us. Of F course. F O U R Tissimo. <laughs> F O U R. And, yeah. So oh, four clever, is in clever. number four. Yes. Yes. Also four, some my calls. Yes. And, um, and we've all been friends for over a decade. We all went to Juilliard together. And it's Soyan Kate Lee, her husband Ron Dunk, and our dear friend Vasilis Varvaresos, who currently lives in Paris. And, but we all were at Juilliard together, we went to the same competitions, we won the same awards, and we've always just been very good friends. Yeah. And then, de you know, then decided to form a quartet and play at hands, and that's a lot of fun. And we do a couple of performances a year. We have to make our own arrangements, which makes it a labor-intensive process, uh -huh. but it's fun. We just did a thing of Simon and Garfunkel, and people just sing along. It's pretty oh, wild. Oh, how it's exciting. totally crazy. Yes. Next year we're doing, you know, Aladdin and I hope Prince of Egypt, the whole Disney thing. Uh -huh. So it's, it's like a super high-quality crossover, basically, because, um, you know, you take four concert pianists and have them play together popular music, but we arrange it ourselves, yes. so it's really, you know fun and virtuoso and whatever. And yeah. then we play some Mozart and Ravel and Well, of whatever. course. Of course. Um, so there's something for everybody. Yeah. So you say that, that they all have won awards. You have won awards, which, which means, I'm assuming, you've won awards. What yeah. awards have you won? Well, well, I mean, from William Petschek Debut Recital Award at Juilliard, which is the best that you can do at Juilliard being a pianist. It's an award where you're presented at Lincoln Center. I have, I have interviewed you twice. This is, I, I, I talked to you a couple of times and I've never, I didn't know this. How exciting. Well, I discovered you know, I, something I, I new. <laughs> thank you. I mean, I don't, I don't usually sit and, you know, count and brag about well, every no, award. But even so. But it, it, it's a big honor and all of us had it, which is extraordinary. How? And uh, at different years, obviously. What does it take to one. win that award? You get nominated. Being really good. Well, you have to be the best of your class, I suppose. Uh -huh. I mean, you get nominated. Uh, you get nominated by the faculty members, and then, then they nominate a couple of people, and then you have to compete. It's like a playoff. So at oh. the end of the day, you end up being like an American Idol finalist. So you have to <laughs> <laughs> play yeah. for your prize. Um, but every, all of us have gotten it, and you know, it's amazing because you get your Lincoln Center debut, presented by Julia Irie, by New York Times, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's wonderful. Wow. And then some competitions around the world, you know, uh, Naumburg, uh, Walter Naumburg International Piano Competition, I won second prize there a decade ago, Soyan won it a few years ago. Uh, Cleveland Piano Competition, Hilton Head, New Orleans, I mean, there's just so much that we've done together over the years. Wow. Um, and we've always been friends, and it's important, I think, among colleagues, to dispel the rumor that all pianists want to stab each other in the back. <laughs> you know, it's so Good. not true. All those stories Good. about the razor blades between the keys at Juilliard. Ooh, ooh, myth. ooh. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. It's I had myth. no idea there were such stories. <laughs> well, there are. People oh. say, my God, you go to Juilliard. It must be so stressful. Well, no. It's actually very friendly. You're surrounded by people who love music. Yeah. yeah, and we're all in it together. And you know, like in any other place, in any socium, uh, there will be friends and there will be people who don't care for each other. But it's not based on the fact that we're all jealous or there's no, you know, extraordinary rivalry. I mean, there's a little bit of competition among certain people, but usually, you know, it's personality types. And you know, if you don't gravitate towards it, then you surround yourself with people who are like you, who don't want to compete 24-7. Yeah, 24 /7. yeah. yeah. So do you ever get tired of, of, um, of talking about this? Uh, about no, I mean, it's, it's interesting for music? me to find new ways of talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's, it's, um, 
I mean, it's my life. Yes. If I were bored with it, I wouldn't be very interesting, I think. Okay. Do you have any advice for performers, beginning performers? Uh, yes. Uh, practice and listen to other people play music. Listen to as much music Listen as to what works. Listen to what, and what doesn't work. You know, it's so important to hear sometimes and not a good performance or the one you don't like. It may not be objectively not good. It must be subjectively not your cup of tea. So you know what you don't want to sound like or what don't you like. It's important to analyze. Now, as I said earlier, knowledge is power. You know, you, then you can trust your gut instinct. But if you don't know what you want, if you don't know what you want to sound like, if you don't know what's your favorite way of embellishing in Mozart, you really are kind of, you know, skating blindfolded, yes, yeah. you know, yeah. through a traffic in New York. And Ooh. this is the kind of thing, you, it's just dangerous, you yeah. know, you really don't know they're going to be hit by a bus. It's which is why you need to, uh, any performer, any artist needs to get out there. They need to get out of there and now we have the incredible resource of the internet, you know. Yeah. 20 years ago, people would say, well, the recordings are expensive, the tickets to the concerts, uh. or I don't have time to go to the library. It's all on your iPhone or Droid yeah. or your iPad, tablet, so whatever. investigate. Yeah, YouTube everything. I do research, like, and it's interesting because you hear different, listen to different people play the same piece back to back. Yeah. Find out what the differences are yeah. and why and yeah. what speaks to you and what doesn't. How okay. would you like? So, you know, it's, it's all in that. And, you know, practice smartly. Don't over-practice. The other advice I would like to give to everybody is don't sit there and practice till you drop dead because you just <laughs> might, actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, it is very unhealthy. Constantine, I have to yeah. cut you off. This has been thrilling. Just thrilling. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, sir, Thank, Thank you, you for joining me. Thank you. And I will see you later. Mm-hmm.